Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. It is Tutorial Tuesday, and today we're going to talk about the Support Armored Command Units, the SACUs. A very extremely, I cannot overemphasize this point, integral part of your late game in Supreme Commander. These guys are crucial in a variety of roles, and we're going to go ahead and go over those in the form of talking about the upgrades, their costs, and the performance of the units in general. Once again, this is a unit tutorial, so we're going to be talking about a whole lot of numbers. If numbers bother you, this may not be the tutorial for you, but if you want to learn about the units, their capabilities, how they match up versus each other, uh, yeah, this is going to be a really good one for you to watch. I'm going to dive straight into this. There are several iterations of the commanders, and I'm going to go ahead and queue some of these up, and I'm going to explain them. Uh, you have the support armor command unit, and then there's presets, which can be built from the quantum gateways in the Forged Alliance Forever Balance. If you're not using the Forged Alliance Forever client, you definitely need to be doing that because it's an awesome place to be. And these allow you to build pre-upgraded commanders straight out of the factory. So you have your base model, then you have shield preset, which obviously has the shield, and then you have the combat preset, which has the gun upgrade and the shield upgrade for UEF. They vary from faction to faction. And then the engineering preset, which is pretty obvious. The intel jammer, which has all of the intel um, oriented upgrades already put on it and then the rambo which is everything i think the combatant is gun upgrade only which is your cheap rush and then the rambo preset is personal shield plus both gun upgrades so that's how that works out and i'm not going to talk about the presets a whole lot just be aware that they're there and it is an extremely easy way to go ahead and get your supreme your uh support that's Supreme Commander, your support SACUs rolling. Now, the only preset that you're not going to find is the RAS, the Resource Allocation System. And that is because you can build support commanders with adjacency bonus by building them, e building the quantum gateway either next to mass extractors or mass fabricators. And the discount that you get is relatively substantial, um, especially if you get it ringed completely with mass fabricators um, of the T3 variety or adjacent to a couple of mass extractors. I don't remember the exact numbers on that. I want to say that if you have the ideal is adjacent to four T3 mechs and it's like a 25% discount. I may be wrong on that though. But anyway, that is so that you can't use eco buildings to get adjacency and spam more eco. They, we didn't want to decrease the cost of increasing your mass income because that leads to more turtling which I think is a pretty good goal to have as far as keeping the game dynamic. So that is the reason that you don't have resource allocation SACUs, and I have a whole bunch of support commanders here with a variety of traits so that we can look at how they compare to each other. Let's see, these three are Cybran, that's another UEF, and that is all Seraphim right here. Okay, we're gonna get these separated out. Let's go ahead and dive into this topic. Um, first of all, just general cost. All of these have a slightly differing cost with slightly differing health statistics. Um, well, what better way than just to jump in? They range between Aeon is the cheapest at 1950 mass, 1950 mass. And then UEF is the most expensive at 2100. So that's 150 mass cost difference, not a huge amount. And the other two are right in the middle there at 2000 and 2050 for Cybern and Seraphim, respectively. The health ranges from Aeon again with the lowest 15,000 health with 17 regen. Um, up to the highest value is, ironically, the Cybern 
T3 support commander. It has 19,000 health and 25 regen, which is really strange that Cybern would have the highest health, highest regen unit. Then you have UEF with 16,000 health and 20 regen, and then Seraphim with 15,500 health and 15 regen, the worst regen of the bunch. All of them have 26 vision radius, 16 omni radius, and 26 water vision radius with a speed of 2.2, which places them slightly faster than the Percival and Brick, and a turn rate of 150, which makes them relatively maneuverable, but not extremely. They don't exactly turn on a dime, but it is pretty close. Um, so that is the base statistics for them. Now to talk about other more important things. The Seraphim unit has the highest base damage at 400 dps all of these have a range of 25 except for the aeon t3 support commander um the uef and cybern sacus both have higher health seraphim has the higher damage gun at 400 as opposed to 300 for the rest of them and then aeon has the longest ranged gun at 30 range as opposed to 25 on the others so that is the difference in the base stats for these and they have a variety of different upgrades all of which um well let's just dive into them the aeon has a couple of different gun upgrades and let's see let me jump into those real quick we've got the react uh, react on refractor which is going to increase your weapons range to 40, adding a damage radius of 3.5 with no additional damage. And that is the only gun upgrade, my bad. So this one is going to be slightly underpowered as far as combatants go, but the AOE is going to be brutal at 3.5. That is huge area of effect. That's border. That's right up there with the T2 stationary artillery in area of effect. And the range is massive. It outranges Percival's and Bricks by a whopping 10. It matches range with all with all of the range bots. This thing is going to be able to kite just about everything. And that is its strength. It can run away and deal a steady amount of damage to a large amount of units without taking damage itself. So that is the combat capability. You can add a shield the it has two shield upgrades which layer i believe the first one costs 1200 mass and then that one nets you 20,000 health and 40 hp of regen so it basically doubles plus a little bit the health of your sacu and then there's the heavy generator costing an additional 1500 mass which bumps that up to 35,000 health total on your shield and a 120 regen on that. So that's a fairly strong shield, and it's relatively cheap. It adds a lot of HP for not a whole lot of cost. And then you also have a nano repair system costing 1500 mass that bumps your regen rate up to 317 damage, 317 health regenerated. The Aeon SACU is one of only two that has the teleport upgrade, which is incredibly useful late game. And then it also has the engineering upgrade, which bumps its build rate up from, let me see here, initial build rate of all of the SACUs is 56. With the engineering upgrade, it bumps them up to 98 for all factions. And just to give you an idea of what's available at once for the Aeon, you have to choose between resource allocation, which nets you 10 mass, 1000 power income, and the Reacton Refractor, which increases the, which adds the area of effect damage and the range. Then in the center slot, you have shield and heavy shield. You have the nano repair system and the personal teleporter. So you have to choose between nano repair and shield, which is kind of strange in my opinion. Kind of, I, I would almost always go for the shield over the regen, but that is, that's just me. 
And then on the right hand side, you've got sacrifice and increased engineering, the rapid fabricator. And the sacrificial system, this basically inserts the reclaim value of the SACU immediately into whatever project you are building. So this is going to, I would have to calculate the total mass cost of this unit. Let me see, let me build a SAM here. So I can build the SAM and then do sacrifice into it. Don't assist, don't assist. Let me see if I can do this here. Poof, instantaneously done. Which that was a huge waste of an SACU because there's significantly more mass in the SACU than in the um, SAM. But that just shows you if you have to have a building and you have to have it right freaking now, all of the Aeon engineers and the Aeon SACU, if they've been upgraded, have that ability. So you can get an artillery, say, or a nuke or something to you know, 80, 85%, and you're like, well, I have to have this done right now or my strategy's not gonna work. And you can sacrifice your available engineers and or SACUs into that project and immediately finish it. So it can be useful sometimes, but not really on a general basis. Um, one thing that you can do that's quite hilarious, if you upgrade personal teleporter and sacrificial system, you can teleport, I think it's like 21 or so SACUs, maybe more than that. I'm not entirely sure. 21 or 23, something like that. I'm sure somebody in the comments will know. You can teleport however many SACUs to a new location and immediately start a GC and sacrifice all of the SACUs into the GC for basically an instantaneous T4. And that can be quite hilarious if you do it in the middle of someone's base. So that is the Aeon SACU in a nutshell. I think I hit all of the upgrades on that. Hopefully that answered any and all questions that you may or may not have had about that unit. Let's move on to Cybern because everybody loves Cybern. I think. There are some Cybern haters. Curse you people, you have no sympathy. Um, these guys, as aforementioned, they do have the highest health. They have a unique upgrade. It is the anti-air upgrade. It's basically... It basically turns the SACU into a walking SAM. There's not really a whole lot of reason not to get this upgrade. Um, if you're not going to go for stealth or the nano repair system, um, this is an awesome one to have on any SACUs that are sticking around your base. If you're using them for engineering and if you get the resource allocation and engineering upgrades and you're just using it around your base, having the SAM upgrade also provides you with very, very strong, unkillable anti-air. Um, the Nanite Missile System does 272 damage per second. It is mobile, which I cannot stress enough, on a range of 60, and it basically behaves like a SAM launcher with slightly, slightly less damage. That, that uh, system costs 800 mass and 30,000 power, which when compared to the SAM, that is the same cost as a SAM with quite a bit more power required and you get slightly lower performance. But again, you can't kill an SACU with two strap bombers and the SACU is mobile so you can walk it underneath gunships, gunships and it is disturbingly powerful. People do not expect it when it happens. So that is one upgrade that they have. They also have the personal cloaking and stealth generators. The stealth is obviously cheaper, 600 mass, 18k power. That is going to allow them to disappear from radar. And then the personal cloaking generator costing 5,000 mass and 500,000 power. And it also adds 15,000 health to the total amount on the SACU. So you move from 19,000 to 34,000 health. And that completely removes the SACU from sight, both radar and vision, unless it is standing in omni radius. So that is a very handy dandy upgrade. Stealth and cloak SACUs are nasty in the water because you can build harms with them and they're an integral part of the late game cyber navy such as it is they also have the standard resource allocation upgrade that costs 4500 mass and 60,000 power 
turns out 10 mass and 1000 power once it's complete. And then they also have a nano repair system which bumps their regen up to an actually pretty massive 425 HP per second. It's plus 400 regen. So you can see how <laughs> that would make your SACU nigh on unkillable by conventional means. You're regening the entire health of your 19,000 health SACU in about 40 seconds. So that is huge, absolutely huge. They also have a couple of gun upgrades and these are very handy. Um, you have the EMP burst, which it does exactly what it sounds like. It adds the EMP effect to the Cybern cannon and it allows them to keep T3, groups of T3 units and I think T4, Maybe not T4, but it seems like I remember it stunning Monkey Lords. Don't take my word on that. Try it out in-game for yourself. I may or may not try it out and add an annotation onto this. But they do definitely stun T3 units. Um, and that allows them to hold units at a standstill. A couple of EMP SACUs paired with a Monkey Lord can absolutely demolish groups of Percivals because the SACUs can keep the Percival stunned while the higher DPS of the Monkey Lord tears through the ranks. So that is a very viable option. That gun upgrade costs 1,000 mass and 60,000 power. Not too expensive. They also have the Disintegrator Amplifier, which costs 800 mass and basically bumps up the range. It takes it up to 35 range instead of the 25 that it begins with. Let me see if I've missed anything. The engineering upgrade, which all of these guys have, 800 mass, 50,000 power, ends up with a build rate of 98. And I think that that is it. Let me see which upgrades are available on which arms. We have the gun competing with the resource allocation system. So you have to choose, again, the Resource Allocation Engineering SAM SACU is excellent in your base. The Cloak or Stealth um, SACU with the Engineering Upgrade and Resource Allocation is good out in Navy. And then you have the Nano Repair System, which is brutally effective, but you can't get Stealth or Anti-Air with. And then there is the EMP burst competing with the Rapid Fabricator. So that is the Cybern SACU. Then we've got, so let's do Seraphim. I'm going to save UEF for last. Um, Seraphim is the T4 killer. These are straight up combat SACUs. They do not have resource allocation upgrade. Um, so you cannot use them for eco boosting. And they do have, they are the other SACU with the teleport upgrade. Costs 15,000 mass and 1,500,000 power, which is huge, but in some cases well worth it. They also have a tactical missile launcher upgrade that matches the Seraphim ACU TAC missile upgrade. Costs 1,000 power and 50,000 ma 1,000 mass, 50,000 power and does require power and mass to build the TAC missiles. And then they also have the standard rapid fabricator upgrade, a nano repair system costing 2,500 mass and 75,000 power that adds 14,000 health and 250 regen. And then that nano repair system Ah, no, it doesn't. I thought it had a stacking one like the Siren ACU does, but it does not. Then they also have a shield generator, which is relatively strong. It costs 1,500 mass and 105,000 power and adds 25,000 health to your SACU along with the 22 regen on the shield. Then they have the overcharge upgrade, which is the T4 killer that I mentioned before. The overcharge upgrade costs 4,500 mass and 270,000 power, and it does 12,000 damage per shot at the cost of 5,000 power. And a group of SACUs can very, very quickly overcharge a T4 to death. Seraphim AC SACUs are the weakest versus T3 and generally other units, but they are by far 
the strongest versus T-Force. They do have the 400 DPS on their initial gun upgrade, which does help, um, but they're kind of stuck at a relatively low range. Um, unless you get the enhanced sensor system, which ironically adds both Intel radius for 60 range on their Omni and 36 vision range, and then the new weapons range is 35. So the vision radius is actually one more than the attack radius, which is kind of strange. Um, it is the only SACU that can actually see further than it can attack after it has the gun upgrade. Now to look at the arms that everything is available on, we have the personal teleporter competing with overcharge. So you cannot both teleport and overcharge, which is very good when you're <laughs> when you're planning your teleport defenses. Because if it could teleport and overcharge, that would just be ridiculous. But it can teleport and tack missile. So you can load TAC missiles into multiple SACUs, teleport in, and immediately launch TACs, which is a brutal sniping tool. It is strong against ACUs, and it is strong against single targets. Additionally, the loop of the missile is smaller than the inside dome of T3 shields. So you can actually teleport inside a T3 shield on one edge and shoot something in the middle or on the other edge of the shield and the missile will fly completely inside the shield without impacting it, which is tremendously useful. The TAC missile competes with the shield and the enhanced sensor system. The enhanced sensor system is the range upgrade on your gun. So you do have to choose between personal shield and your gun, which is a hard choice to make, but it just depends on what you want out of your SACU. And then on the right hand arm, we have Rapid Fabricator versus the Nano Repair. So theoretically, you can get an overcharge shielded Nano Regen Commander, but that is going to sacrifice your gun range. So you're going to have to get really close. So if you're going T4 killing, I would recommend the Enhanced Sensor System and the Nano Repair with the gun upgrade, the overcharge upgrade. So um, I think that is going to wrap this one up. That is all I have to say about that. Well, one more thing. Um, you can get the Rapid Fabricator on top of the TAC Missile and Teleport upgrades, which helps you build TACs faster once you're on location. However, um, if you're teleporting in for a snipe, I would highly recommend getting the Nano Repair System. If you don't... Excuse me. Got a yawn. All right. If you don't get the Nano Repair System... Um, a enemy ACU can easily overcharge your group of SACUs in two shots. Or if there's two people there and each one lands an overcharge, pop goes all of your nice shiny SACUs immediately upon teleporting in. So you either need to be careful about what you, where you teleport and use the rapid fabricator upgrade, or you need to get the nano upgrade if you're going to be teleporting into an extremely hairy situation and keep in mind that you can grab the um, tactical missile launcher if you grab the personal shield the overcharge actually goes through personal shield so personal shield are protected from units but not from another acu overcharging you all right that is all i have to say about seraphim last up it is uef undeniably the strongest by far of the SACUs and the most broken. I'm going to ramble for just a second here. Um, SACUs are imbalanced, but they are such a late game option. Um, the quantum gateway is expensive. The first few SACUs that you build are expensive. Everything is expensive at this stage. So by the time you can spam SACUs effectively, you have enough build power, you have enough mass to get quantum gateways online and build them. It's not such a huge broken deal, but be aware that SACUs of any faction are about as strong as T3. And then the Cybern and UEF are decidedly stronger than T3s and most of the T4s. And then Seraphim SACUs just straight up demolish T4s of any faction. So you have to be aware of that going in. 
Um, UEF is the most broken though, and I'm going to explain why here. Um, they have the strongest shield, the strongest gun, and not that much of a mass cost difference from the other SACUs. Let's run over the stats real quick. They begin with 16,000 health, and the same stats as all the other ones, 25 range, 300 DPS. But they have a couple of gun upgrades, and they can pair it with the shield generator. Now we have the heavy plasma refractor. That one adds a damage radius of 2.5 and a weapons range of 35. So you have your range and AOE added. Then on the other arm, you have the energy accelerator. This one adds 2.5 rate of fire. Um, so that means your SACU goes from doing 300 damage per second to 750 damage per second. So at 750 damage times 2.5 AOE on a range of 35. And you can see how that would be just a little bit strong. <laughs> um, it's just gonna it's just gonna ravage groups of T3. It's faster than the T3 main bots and it outranges them. So it can just run away and hit two or three at a time with 750 DPS. And this unit only costs uh, well, I'd have to calculate the stacked cost of the gun upgrades. Just rest assured that health and damage wise this thing does better than the percival does and then in addition to all of the damage that you can bring to bear with those upgrades you can also upgrade your personal shield and the first level personal shield generator adds a whopping 32,000 health with 50 regen for a total of 48,000 health for relatively low mass cost and uh, that's that's just so much health it takes a ton to kill these you can also stack the shield into a bubble shield with 52,000 health to protect other units that are around you this type of mobile shield here makes a group of Percival's infinitely stronger because you can protect the entire damage potential of your group of Percy's with this bubble shield while soaking up 52,000 worth of damage, which is plenty of time for this SACU plus maybe seven or eight Percival's to kill a Monkey Lord with none of these units getting damaged at all. It's really, really strong. They have an engineering drone instead of the engineering upgrade. Um, this one costs 380 mass, which is a little bit less than the other factions. Um, than the other factions engineering suite upgrade, but it does have slightly less build power. The advantage to it though, is that this little drone can fly and it has the full T3 build suite. So if you already have a T3 factory, you can just fly away into an unseen corner of the map and plop, throw down a T3 HQ or a T3 support factory. And yeah, instant base. Yeehaw. So that is kind of strong too. Um, again, not as much build power, but definitely has a lot more usefulness than some of the other um, engineering suite upgrades. And this uh, this also has the resource allocation upgrade, and it is the same as the other ones. Cost 4,500 mass, inputs 10 mass, and 1,000 power after you get the upgrade. I'm trying to think, what is the other? I have a radar jammer upgrade, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is the radar jammer, which I think is a pointless thing for the SACU to have. Um, all it does is create fate false radar images um, it can spoof targeting systems a little bit but I think by this point in the game your opponent's gonna have Omni your opponent's gonna have scouting and your radar jammers not really gonna do any good although it is relatively cheap 600 mass 18,000 power 
And then you have the enhanced sensor system, which costs a thousand mass. Um, it adds an omni radius of 80 and a new vision radius of 45. So let's take a look at how these conflict with each other. We have the radar jammer competing with personal shield and engineering drone. We have the intel system competing with the damage increase gun upgrade. And then we have the resource allocation competing with the area of effect plus range gun upgrade. So that's going to wrap up the UEF SACUs. Now, I will say about this particular tutorials cast, I will probably end up redoing this one at some point. I admittedly did not put as much time and effort into research on this one because I am extremely hopeful that these will get changed next balance period. Um, the Aeon SACUs are not bad. The Cybern ones are really good. The Seraphim are a bit too strong, in my opinion. And the UEF SACUs are just completely broken combat-wise. Um, so I'm really desperately hopeful that there will be a balance change on this and that I will be able to redo this video after that point and give you a much more solid set of statistics and abilities after that's taken place. Now, general uses of SACUs. I'm just going to talk about this for a second because it bears mentioning. Um, SACUs can fulfill two extremely different, both highly useful roles. Number one, they can be combat units, and they are not to be underestimated as combat units for the reasons that I spent half of this cast describing. Number two, they can be support units to keep around your base. And you may say, you know, for the mass invested, the resource allocation upgrade's not worth it. It is 10 mass, 1,000 power. It's kind of sad. And then the engineering upgrade's not worth it. The entire unit as a whole only has 98 build power, which is way more expensive than the build power in factories or engineers. However... You need to combine both of those attributes with a third, and I think that SACUs are actually at least as good, if not better, a choice for eco spam than fabricators are. Um, they are both build power and eco. They are mobile, and they can defend themselves. They have 15,000 plus health. They're not going to die to one bombing run. They're not even going to die to a T4 bombing run. They're going to survive that. So if you if you build a lot of SACUs, your opponent is not going to be able to kill off your build power and handicap your efforts. And I've actually seen this at play time and time again. I just had it happen last night in a sentence game. I had a T3 artillery up. I kept killing my opponent's build power, my opponent's power, their mass, everything over and over again, but they had the majority of their build power in SACUs, and this was in the extreme late game. This is after we'd cycled through all the other phases of the game. And because they had such tough, resilient engineering units, they were able to rebuild and rebuild and rebuild over and over again until they finally overwhelmed um, my ability to hold them off anymore where I was holed up with my T3RD. So that is not to be underestimated. Um, also, your eco is not as killable when it is in that form. And then they are combat units. Not only do they have high health, they have relatively high damage. So push come to shove, if you have a surprise T4, yeah, you've got a bunch of resource allocation to engineer suite SACUs, but hey, they have 15,000 health apiece and they do 300 damage apiece. So by all means, throw them at that T4. If you got five or six, you can probably kill the T4 even though you'll lose most of your SACUs. You would rather be alive <laughs> and minus a little bit of eco than dead and have your mass fabricators in one piece. So that is pretty much all I have to say about this. Oh, one more thing. The Cybern SACU is especially useful in that role because it has the anti-air upgrade. You can get engineering, you can get resource allocation, and you can get anti-air, which is huge. 
So do that. If you're patrolling your base and helping out with your build, get the anti-air upgrade. It is worth it. All right. That is going to wrap up the SACU tutorial. Hopefully you learned something. If you didn't, maybe I can throw some more numbers at you and you might be able to let some of them stick. I don't know. But anyway, that is going to wrap it up for me in this cast. I will catch you in the next one. I'm going to be turning out a game cast on Thursday. And then on Saturday, we're doing the live stream again. Do not miss that. Um, it is going to be at 6 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. Last time we had about 50 people over there. And we had a great time. Had a bunch of questions and answers. Had an update on the servers. And watched a game together. Actually watched two games together. So hopefully you guys will be around for that. And we can have a great time together. Alright, I'm going to get out of here before any more time has passed. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.